Yo, what you saying? It's Jason Simmons, the Cockney Cook. Check out the new tip for that. <laughs> oh, this is Jason's Lockdown Larder, and today we are cooking something that is off the planet. We're doing my bedrock beef ribs. Yabba dabba do! So let's get on with it. The hat's on. The hat's up, it's cooking time. <laughs> it's cooking time. <laughs> okay, for our recipe, we will need one chipotle, an onion. We will need two carotis, two carrots, two cloves of garlic, two bay leaves, a sprig, a sprig of rosmarino, put that to one side. We will need, well, I would say two short ribs, um, but I've got three here because I had them in the freezer and I couldn't, <laughs> there was three in the packet, <laughs> so I couldn't split them up. So, uh, so I've gone with three, but two would be lovely, and two, they're so big, they're probably three, four people. Um, you can get your butcher to trim them so they're a bit smaller and they will feed one per person. So then get four. But these are great big whoppers. I've got 500 mils of red wine and I've got 300 mils of beef stock. That's it. So let's have a quick, let's have a quick look. First thing we need to do is chop up all our veg. It's as simple as that. Sick pick of our fingers. Um, we have prepared our veg, but we're gonna put it to one side and we're gonna seal our beef ribs first. But these cuts are cuts of beef that do really well with slow cooking. If you fast cook them, they're like that. If you slow cook them, they're like that's all. Let's slow cook them. So I've got my pan on. Gonna stick about, that's just over, that's a big tablespoon. Great big tablespoon. Um, and we're gonna seal them one at a time. You'll notice that I am, let's just get that. <laughs> just like that, I should move out of the way. <laughs> I'm gonna take them from one side to the other because obviously we don't want to put our sealed meat back onto a pan that's had raw meat. Now the idea is we're not cooking them, we're just sealing the outside. Not only that, you'll get a little bit of the beef that sticks to the bottom of the pan, and that is flavour. That's what we want. So, I'm going to seal these off. All you need to know is that you just leave them for about 20, 30 seconds each side, and then you turn it. So that's all three of them done. Let's take this one out of the pan. They're called bedrock beef ribs because they look like the kind of thing that Fred Flintstone would have for dinner. We've rendered a bit of the fat off. We've got a little bit of our beef stuck to the bottom of the pan, which is all good because that is flavor. And then as we cut the rest off, that is gonna come off, get that. Lovely, right. So we're gonna, we don't want much color on, well we don't want any color on this. This is just a softening job. Okay, so we're gonna cook these for about six or seven minutes, soften them down, and then we're gonna add our beef ribs back. Oh, we've got to add our garlic first. We're gonna add our beef ribs back two minutes later. And then we're going to add our stock and our wine. Come back in a second. They've been cooking away now for, oops, there's a bay leaf, row bay leaf. <laughs> row leaf. Um, they've been cooking away for six minutes. I'm going to pop my garlic in, 
I'm going to leave my garlic in there for two minutes. So I'm going to pop a little bit of my wine in there to get all that lovely caramelisation off the bottom of the pan. And that's going to get all that flavour off. Now bear in mind this is going to go in the oven and this is going to cook for four hours. Four! Oh, Roger Moore hours. So, you know, if your carrots are just still got a nice bit of bite to them, that's perfect. Right. So, that's that. De glass the pan. Let's get our ribs organised nicely in there. Now, this monster, oh, I'm just about to lift it up. I'm going to put it in the middle. There we go. So, let's sit nicely in there. Pop my red wine in there. Right. Now, the reason I've popped them in there before I put the red wine in there is because as that red wine, I'm going to bring that, is reducing, some of it is going to get soaked into the beef and give it a nice. <laughs> Wine it tastes <laughs> gonna be I was thinking of like a really good word and the only word I could come up with was whiny. <laughs> so that's gonna <laughs> Oh great myself. I'll just sit here all day just talking to myself and <laughs> having a laugh. I had the right laugh on my own. On my own I was <laughs> Right, come back in a sec. Wine is reduced by half. Pop my big rosemary stick. Actually, I'm going to pull it because it's a it's a big one. And the leaf on either side. Put my beef stock straight on the top. Wow. <laughs> so, honestly, when I'm cooking, there's a certain point where you think that looks so good that I almost get. I get excited, and I just can't hide it. <laughs> right, that is perfect, and that is stage one done. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna pop the lid on, and whack it in the oven, and we're gonna cook it for four hours on 150. 150 for four hours. When we finish that, we're gonna take a look, because there's two avenues we can go. We can either eat it at that point, we can glaze it with my yabba dabba do glaze and we can then pop it in the oven, crisp it. <laughs> Come back, it's going in the oven. Four hours of <laughs> I'm sitting there. A, a watched clock never passes time. You know, I was sitting there dying for those four hours ago because the smells were absolutely incredible. So I waited two hours, I took it out, and I turned the ribs, okay, halfway through cooking. My oven is quite fierce, 150, 140 should be fine. My oven, I turned it, actually turned it down to 120. Low and slow. <laughs> so let's have a little look. That is Oh, that is extra. The smells, they can be soft, succulent, and just falling apart. You could just get yourself some mash, serve it. You will notice we didn't season it before. Now, I didn't season it because now I'm going to make my yabba dabba do <laughs> marinade. I'm going to coat the ribs and I'm going to cook them again so they're twice cooked. Now these are beautiful, succulent and tender. We're going to put our glaze over the top and they're going to be sticky, crispy and succulent. So we're taking them up to another level. Let's crack on with our yabba dabba, <laughs> yabba dabba do sauce. <laughs> our yabba dabba do sauce. <laughs> First thing, let's move over that way. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our burner on, obviously. You'll be using a stove like a normal human being. We've got 200 millilitres of our 
sauce that we cooked our ribs in. Okay, we pop that in. That's 200 ml. Marmalada. Marmalade to you and me. <laughs> we need one, two, three tablespoons, okay? Three tablespoons of marmalade. And I'm just gonna turn, start mixing up. Now the marmalade will dissolve into our gravy. Just turn that down a fraction. A bit fierce, lovely. And that, as that cooks onto our ribs, that'll create a lovely tart stickiness. So we've got our tart, like an old tart. <laughs> got that in there. Let's put a bit of, um, let's give that a little shake up. Tommy K in there. Okay, so we're gonna go in with, oh, it's gonna be one of those jobs. Oh, there we are. One, two, tablespoons of tomato ketchup. I'll just put half because that was a flowing over that last one. Soy sauce. Have a little bit of, we're gonna put a whole tablespoon of soy in there, okay? Right, now I'm just gonna mix this about a little bit. That's, that's better. Right. Lovely. Oh, it's looking sticky and smelling amazing. Sweet and tart. English mustard. Let's go in with a nice big teaspoon of English mustard. That is a big one. That's that. Give this a quick wipe, lovely, not messy bits. And if you've got any of this sriracha sauce, it's a chilli sauce, but what I find with it is, it's not too fit, it would give us a nice little hit of chilli, but without blowing our heads off, and that's about half a teaspoon. Now, I'm just gonna simmer all that away, and come back in a second. Our yabba dabba do sauce is done. I've stirred it, I've blipped it away, I've combined all those ingredients. I took a little taste of it and it's got everything we want it to have. There's a little bit of spice in there, there's a bit of sweetness in there, there's that unctuous, beautiful juice, that winey gravy that we braised our ribs in. There's a sweetness from the tomato ketchup running through it. There's a piquantness from the mustard in there, so it's got like, it's coming at you from all different angles and when it goes over the ribs and then we cook them again, they're gonna crisp up and that's gonna kind of make this lovely sticky coating to go on the top. Our yabba dabba do sauce. I'm just gonna pour it over the top. 25 minutes on 200. And we've glazed our ribs, we cook them or they were in there for 30 minutes actually. So a little bit of our yabba dabba doo glaze over the top. So that is it. I know there's a bit of effort that goes into it, but believe me, every mouthful is gonna be worth it. Can we just have a little zoom in? We've got a rainbow slaw, we've got our Hasselback potatoes, and we've got our fantastic bedrock beef ribs with yabba dabba do sauce. You've been watching Jason's Lockdown Larder. Thank you very much.